Okay, this little um, clip is on PCR. Um, oh, don't we love our three letter acronyms? Okay, this one stands for the polymerase, polymerase chain reaction. I'll refrain from bursting into song. So, polymerase chain reaction, what do we use it for? Um, probably the simplest description is to amplify a DNA sample. What we mean by amplification is that we're going to make lots of copies. And it's a pretty simple and straightforward process. I'm sure it took somebody an awful long time to work out how to do it. But what we're left with having to learn is uh, reasonably simple. So effectively, we're going to make the DNA replicate. So the whole point is to, um, is to replicate the DNA. So we're actually mimicking what goes on in the nucleus uh, in interphase just before cell division and um, we're using pretty much the uh, the same enzyme to do this sort of building bit for us um, instead of separating the strands at the start so we know that DNA replication we need to separate the two strands out at the start and um, instead of separating them with the enzyme DNA helicase we're going to separate uh, the DNA into two single strands and they're going to act as templates and what we use to do that is heat so you just merely you heat up your DNA to 95 degrees centigrade uh, and that breaks the hydrogen bonds So now we've got two single strands of DNA that can act as templates. Uh, the next stage is to anneal primers. So primers, what primers are, some word here, um, just going to shift colour so that we don't get confused when you look back at it. What a primer is, I'm going to colour them in orange, these are um, little short complementary bits of DNA. Uh, this word anneal means join to. So primers, what their job is, is to mark the section to be copied. Um, so Again, it's by complementary base pairing, and you need to bear in mind that two types are needed. One for each three prime end. And of course these will have different base sequences, so you wouldn't expect it to sort of, you know, start and stop with a little bookend of the same base sequence. Uh, so you need two different primers because the base sequences at each end of the DNA are different. Now that um, takes place at a much lower temperature than 50 degrees. So you're kind of looking at, um, I'm going to put 55 degrees, it could be anywhere between 50 and 60 degrees, but they're not going to anneal without the temperature being lowered because obviously you raise the temperature to break the hydrogen bonds. So, you know, if you lower the temperature, the hydrogen bonds can reform and you're using those just to sort of mark oh yeah this is the bit that we want to copy um, the temperature is then raised so we raise the temperature to around about 72 degrees 70 to 72 degrees and we use a particular sort of DNA polymerase called TAC polymerase now what's special about that is that it works at this higher temperature. So it's from some sort of, you know, oh well, it shouldn't be abbreviating temperature, ooh, do you need? 
Uh, so it works at a higher temperature, so it's just this special DNA polymerase. Um, it's going to join the individual nucleotides together. So we're also going to need new nucleotides. So this is the one that joins new nucleotides together. And again, that's by complementary base pairing. So that's just the same as DNA replication. It's just that we're doing it in a little machine. So we replicate the DNA, you separate your two strands, you cool it down, add in your primers, your primers anneal, they mark the section to be copied, you raise the temperature, add in your TAC polymerase, some new nucleotides and the DNA replicates. And now we've got two identical strands and chain reaction, we then do it again. So we separate those two identical DNA molecules into four template strands primers, you know, lower the temperature, add the primers in, primers anneal, raise the temperature, put your DAC, TAC polymerase and your nucleotides in and the whole thing will go again and then you can raise it to 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, can't do any more maths than that. Um, so effectively you're just increasing the number. It is a phenomenally efficient process and over the course of 40 cycles, that's not very many, you can get 1 billion DNA molecules all copied from that initial uh, DNA. <coughs> so why would you want to do that um, and what are the problems with it? Well, you might want to do it if you've got quite a small sample of DNA. For example, if you discover a super duper new gene and you want to investigate it, you might want to make more copies of it. Um, it might be that you're using the DNA that you've got forensically. So you might have quite a small sample, a single hair cell, um, a few sperm, a drop of blood that's only got a few white blood cells in it and you might want to amplify your sample. So that's great. It is worth bearing in mind that the machine will just amplify whatever there is in it. So one of the issues is contamination. So if your DNA uh, is adulterated in any way whatsoever, and it could be a bacteria, it will amplify that DNA as well. And now you know why in CSI they're always, you know, uh, well, what's the one, silent witness, they're always trundling around, you know, with everything covered up. They have to have everything covered up so that they don't drop their hair, their skin, into the sample that they're going to amplify up. So that's it for PCR, that's nice and straightforward.